Lately, I've been in the mood for XCOM 2. It's one of those games like Mountain Blade or Total War that occasionally calls out to me. It's a game that's familiar, but each run is that little bit different. I always wonder what story will it throw at me this time, what unique little events will happen along the way. Before long, I had to get gate crashing. The first shots in this uprising will be fired by Mary Bell, Axel Weber, Owen Edwards, and... a girl in a baseball cap. Bell sets the pace by closing right in on the statue and the forces surrounding it. Baseball Cap takes a more cautious approach as Weber goes wide, presumably for better coverage. Meanwhile, Edwards hangs back, letting his allies take the lead. And now it's the pod's turn. They are still unaware of the danger they're in, but they start headed back around the monument to their victory. And this is where XCOM panics, and things on the tutorial mission, on normal, start going wrong already. Bell sees an opportunity to clear an entire squad with little risk slipping away, and rushes ahead, unknowingly stealing the spot from a much better prepared bit of headwear, who nonetheless runs out into an exposed position to try and make that throw. Now she has to hope her allies can simply cull the soldier who has her flank. Well, the situation went from bad to worse, but nothing a second dose of explosives can't fix. If you find yourself in a blast pit, keep blasting. The aliens decide to welcome XCOM with an impressive show of marksmanship, as they put down Edwards at 50 paces. A display which wrung Mary Bell to her core, and left the crew with a strange sense of deja vu. What follows is both XCOM and Advent closing in on each other. A frantic close-range battle ensues. Sub-Romanian pushes up and heroically... whiffs her shot. Then the Advent officer rushes in and villainously... whiffs his. And from the afterlife, Edwards is annoyed that all of their accuracy was wasted on him, as XCOM steadily whittle down the remaining forces and the bomb is finally planted. Okay, so far, so what? This just sounds like a rather poor showing of Gatecrasher. But let's join the crew on the ship. That was nerve-wracking. <laughs> Fucking <Yeah>. bullshit. <laughs> that that is nerve-wracking. I wasn't playing alone. This is a new half-baked way of playing called X Commanderless. Every soldier was played by a different person over Parsec, and during the mission we couldn't communicate whatsoever. First things first, eh? Fuck you for stealing what could have been a literal triple kill from me by going into that piece of cover. And pop him off? How? how oh, what, oh, oh, Ben, you activate the pod! Oh no. <sighs> fucking save me! Ooh. Oh, you fucking missed. No! No, no, you no! Know. There was a lot of treading on toes. It was disorganized, unprofessional, and, to me anyway, utterly enthralling. The uncertainty that other people will make the right move, that you may be getting in the way of the right move, it made the rather easy intro to XCOM's mechanics into a scrum. After some chatting, research, picking some new unfortunate puppets for ourselves and colour coordinating them, we set off to destroy an alien relay. And as we hit ground, radio silence resumed. It's a nice snowy map. It's good. I've never been one to play games optimally. I like to try and experiment, attempt weird things, clutch victory from the jaws of defeat, and sometimes see just how bad things can go. But as Ben takes his shiny new rookie with barely a scratch to the side of a truck and Swede thinks it's high time for high noon, I'm more than a little bit worried. Does Swede always look like he's yeah, gonna do something? Yeah, watch might not oh, be is he bad Really? Idea. No! No, Sweet, these really? Ben oh, is side on! <laughs> Sweet, no, don't do oh, you're on. screaming, aren't you? Side on! You're screaming. This we is the end of our turn. We, no one else is going to get to shoot this turn. Don't oh my god, We need my first fire! Don't. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> Why? oh my fucking god. I mean, you killed oh. him, but like... Okay, you got away worried. with that. You got it. You got away with it. Up next was the approach to a house. In regular XCOM 2, this would be a doddle, making sure everyone can see each other while keeping cover in the way of potential threats. But without being able to coordinate, it's a bumbling, slow affair of... Oh. Ben's booking it for the window. I should say, he's new to this game. We're seeing a bunch of different playstyles smashing into each other with little rhyme. XCOM is a game where you may chance one of your pieces so that another one can cover for it or capitalize. 
Playing like this feels like it's every man for himself. You have to hope your mates will see the funny side and help you out with a pinch. Luckily, the sectoid thought this was a defenestration demonstration and surrendered the easy kill XCOM offered them, to instead go outside and mind control Swede. Probably just to telepathically ask, Did you see what that twat did? Only for his probe to reveal that, really, the entire crew is just as bad. The fact this scuffle then proceeded as well as it did is proof that there's something in the universe looking out for Sigrid Jensen. It seems Advent's biggest crime is hijacking people's internet to make gargantuan uploads, and considering we're in Canada, this is particularly heinous. So we put a stop to that, and this causes some friction with the neighbours. No, I didn't mistake having a smoke for a flash. I just wanted to fumigate the house for insectoids. Then then aired it out, and Swede settled the dispute with the neighbours. I thought I had a flashbang. <laughs> I I figured you thought it was something else. Yeah, I was I did not know. But hey, whatever. Just like perfection. Absolutely flawless. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I don't lie so well in the moment. Back at base, the research continues, and a vest none of us will wear is made and promptly hung up on the wall. Later that month, we're back out to escort a VIP to safety, and as we move along one of the many plazas the aliens love so much, I'm hoping the team will divert to a nice little cramped alleyway where enemy numbers won't matter. Naturally, they instead push into another plaza, or scale a building to get a bird's eye view of it. It is rather lovely. As always, there is no coordination. We run into two hostiles on the way over, and while short work is made of them, Swede's unit is once again taken as a thrall. I'm starting to suspect he may actually want to join the aliens. But once again, the link is severed, but my distrust remains. As we creep onto the building where evac awaits, I'm actually rather on edge. There are aliens on the floors below, stomping around mere tiles away from noticing the agents on the roof. Yet somehow, despite me at one point blocking the exit with our escortee, we managed to creep past. Perhaps they just wanted to ensure there's no further property damage. I'm sure my comrades will agree with me that dodging the alien sights was nerve-wracking. Well, that was pretty relaxing. Well, that was not, not much happening. What a chill time. I thought that was a butt-clenching stealth operation right there. Just... I didn't think it was butt-clenching. Apparently not. So anyway, that's only the first three missions, but this is an incredibly fun way to play. A very unique experience that we're likely to keep up in some form. XCOM 2 is all about stats, game knowledge, flanks. It's about weighing up what you know and making calculated calls. But what makes it so memorable is the uncertainty. The procedurally generated levels, the whiffed shots, and the odd AI. Taking it a step further and making your comrades part of the uncertainty makes the whole experience that bit more daunting. You can rely on yourself to make a call you'll agree with. But what about your mates? <laughs>